So the first um, thing that we need to know about in order to interact with our Android is something called ADB. That stands for Android Debug Bridge. So now that's running and I'm going to open a second command prompt. This time, instead of going to that um, emulator directory, I'm going to go to that other directory that I mentioned earlier that would be important, which is platform tools. So, platform tools. So now we have a bunch of little like utility and tools and things um, that may be useful for depending on what you're doing. But the main one that I use most is adb.exe. So uh, adb can do a lot of things, but um, its most important thing probably is just being able to talk to the device and run commands on the device without actually having to be inside the device itself and like clicking things. So first thing is you have to find your device. So run ADB devices and it starts the daemon and then it lists the attached devices. And the only one attached right now is this emulator. We can see that we are actually um, able to see this device. That is kind of an important step because I'll show you how to run this from Linux in a minute and that will, there, there's a little bit more difficulty in making sure you're able to see the device. So the first thing before you actually do anything with ADB, you want to run ADB devices and just make sure that it can see your device. So once we have that, um, we then want to, we can run shell. And now you might notice that before our prompt was this showing where we were in the directory of the Windows PC where we could had ADB. Um, now the prompt says generic x86 ARM, which you don't have to know what that means. It's not really important. But main thing to notice is that it is different and it's not that Windows file structure anymore. So this, what we're in right now, is the file system of this device. So if you know anything about like um, IT and networking things, you can think of this as you we basically SSH'd into our virtual device. Um, so we have a quote unquote remote session, even though it's not remote, it's on the same machine, but that doesn't matter. We have a session in the file system of this Android and we can run it's essentially just like a linux operating system and we can run commands um, and you'll notice that i'm getting permission denied that's because um, we, we have this dollar sign prompt which means that you can run who am i and the user is shell but we want to be able to do have more permissions than just shell so it's important to note that this device is by default rooted. So we have root permissions on this device and we can do a lot more with it than if it's just like a factory device. And that is actually why we didn't select the um, one with the Play Store enabled because that would not be the case if it was one of those. So we, that's, that's to backtrack, backtrack a little bit. That's why we chose one of these instead of one of those with the Play Store. So, um, we want to get a more elevated privilege than just being the shell user. So we're going to run SU, um, which stands for super user, and run that. And now you notice that the prompt, instead of a dollar sign, it's now a pound sign or a hashtag, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so now if we run who am I, we are root. And now if we run that same ls command, which if you're not familiar with the Linux um, command ls just lists the directories, uh, list the files inside the directory that you're in. Um, so if I run ls again, now it lists 
all of the directories or the files in that directory. If we go to this um, storage right here, um, CD is change directory. If anyone is again not familiar with um, Linux uh, directory traversal and those kind of things, um, go to storage. We want to go to self ls go to primary and now you see this if i go to files right here so this downloads right here is that download folder so if i'm going to make a this is a test and i'm going to save test.txt. Um, now uh, I'm going to back out of this. Um, and now you see that the um, prompt is back to that Windows directory. So now I'm no longer in the file system of the phone. I'm back on my home PC. Um, and I'm going to run a different um, ADB command this is going to actually show you how to um, you can upload and download files directly to your phone using ADB. We can run ADB and there are two commands with ADB. There's push and there's pull. If you push something then you are uploading something to the device. So you have something on your PC and you want to put it on your phone, then you would push to push it to the phone. If there's something on your phone and you want to get it onto your PC, you can pull to get it from your phone onto your PC. It should be pretty self-explanatory, but just wanted to make sure that's understood. Um, so we want to push test.txt. So that's that um, text file that I just made that just said this is a test. So I'm pushing it from that location, and um, I'm going to put it back to that same place where we were earlier. So um, I'm running ADB push the location of that text file that I just made, and then I'm put I'm going to push it to storage self primary. And you might notice that I was doing backslashes when I did this one and then I did forward slashes when I did this one. That's just a quirk between Windows and Linux. Because Android is based on Linux, it uses forward slashes and Windows uses backslashes. That's just a thing. You you get used to that once you start doing this kind of stuff for a while. So I'm gonna run that command. There we go. I didn't run it. Okay, so it was a very small file, so it did not take long at all. It was 14 bytes. So one file pushed um, 14 bytes in 0 0.002 seconds. Very fast. So now I'm going to go back into my shell. I'm going to do su again so I can be root just to make sure I can access everything I want to access. And I'm going to go back to storage, self, primary, and again, you see all these things right here. And now you see test.txt. I'll just move to downloads. So now if I go into downloads, hit ls again, now I see that test.txt. And if I go to downloads, there's that test.txt that I just moved, maybe the HTML viewer. There we go, yeah, see, this is a test. So that's that text file that I just created and it does not want to drag properly. There it is. Um, that's that text file that I just created and I used ADB to push it into the device and it got into the storage cell primary, which is the part of the file system that you actually access from the phone itself when you're messing with that whole directory system. All right, so that's kind of how to um, 
kind of interact with the device using ADB. Now, um, that was all from the same computer. Any sort of tools that I'm going to be using to poke at it and prod it and do any sort of hacking on it, I'm going to run those tools from my Linux VM. So I'm going to open a terminal um, and I can also run ADB, which is that tool I was running from this uh, command prompt. I'm going to back out of that just so I'm back to square one. So um, over here I was running adb.exe. For Linux, um, you can actually install ADB as like a standalone thing for um, the for the Windows side, when I installed Android Studio, those, um, that, where is it? This platform tools directory, that came installed with the Android Studio. So all of those tools, including ADB, were downloaded at the same time when I downloaded the entire Studio package. Um, but I don't actually have to download all of that um, in order to run ADB, which is all I really care about right now. To install any sort of like standalone package from the command line in Linux, you want to do sudo apt-get install ADB. This is pretty simple. You're just um, calling the package ADB and you want to install it. Now I want to um, talk to this device with ADB. So if I run ADB devices like we did earlier, and you'll notice that I'm not doing ADB.exe like I was before. The .exe is like a specifically Windows thing that you don't have to do that um, for Linux or if you're doing this on Mac OS or anything like that. .exe is specifically for things that run on Windows. So I'm just running ADB devices and you'll see that there are no devices attached. So that's because this um, emulator is not running on this VM. We need to find a way to get that pathway from our Parrot VM to this Android app, this um, emulator. Basically for the Android emulator, there are these special network addresses that are registered for this device. The Android developers, they made this special alias 10.0.2.2, which is the one that we're going to work with. Because we got this 10.0.2.2, we're going to, instead of just doing ADB directly because we have no attached devices, we first need to attach this device. So we're going to do adb connect 10.0.2.2 by default um, this adb server it runs on port 5555 so anytime we do um, anything where we have to connect specifically to an ip and it's not just already listed as connected we're going to have to um, specify an, um, the port number now we run that and now it's connected to 10.2.2.2.5555. Now if we do ADB devices, now it's listed and it's attached. And now we can run all those same commands that we were running before from the Windows side and like ADB shell. And now we can do the same thing we did before, sue. So we drop, has the hashtag or a pound. So we're into a elevated privilege. And we can go through uh, wait, storage self primary um, and download. And there's that same text file that we put in there earlier. 